Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video, I'm going to go over how to create a space exploration game in Harlow 2.0. Now, this video is part of a set of videos that covers how to create this space exploration example in each story format, Harlow, Sugarcube, and Snowman, that's part of Twine 2.1. So this space exploration example borrows heavily from games like FTL, where randomly generated obstacles prevent the player from her goal. So our narrative premise here is that a ship has taken damage while in a hazardous area of space. With the navigation system broken, you know that it will take 15 hyperspace jumps to make it out of the area and back to safety. So what are the game rules? The mechanics here are that each hyperspace jump takes one unit of fuel, so each time we jump we lose one unit, and because the navigation system is broken, each jump lands you in a random system of one to four planets. So those planets, marked either red or green, designate what we'll get from there. So red are high risk, high reward, green are low risk, low reward, and the chance of red or green is 50%. So it's either going to be red or green. So we start with 20 health, two units of fuel, and we explore space. We hyper jump to each new system, we explore those planets to get resources, and we try to make our way across the hazardous area of space, and if we get 15 hyperspace jumps, then we make it out of the area and we made it safely. So let's program in the rules here. So this passage within the editor actually has the establishment of those rules I just talked about. We established the health, the fuel, and the number of jumps, and we'll look at that code just in a few moments. So let's explore space. So as we see here, we have our hyper jump, which allows us to hyper jump, as well as a heads up display of our health, which is currently 20, our fuel, which is currently 2, and our number of jumps left at 15. We're also in a randomly generated system that has, in this case, four planets, two red and two green. Now red are high risk, high reward, green are low risk, low reward. Each time we click on these, an outcome happens. So let's click on red and it was a hostile environment, damaged the ship, but extra fuel was found. So we lost five to health, but we gained plus one to fuel, and notice the heads up display was updated. So our health went down, our fuel went up. So let's go green. Uh, so low risk, low reward, we got one health back. Green, nothing happened. Red, hostile ship attacked, we lost four to health. And in each time, this was updated. So let's hyper jump. So notice we lost one to fuel, it's down by one. And our number of jumps left are now 14 because we've made the initial jump. So look green, red. Oh, our health is getting low. I'm not gonna risk that. So hyper jump again. So now we're down to two. Oh, our health is getting very low. Ah, it's game over. <laughs> so we, we were attacked or something happened and our ship exploded in flight and it's game over. So let's go look at that code. So in this example, it has a number of different passages, three of which are connected and everything else works in different ways here. So I'm not gonna cover the start passage because all that does is point to the passage programming the rules. So let's pull that out. And as I mentioned, this establishes the different things here. So our health is initially set to 20, fuel is set to two, system is set to an empty array using the array macro, which will come into play in just a moment, and our number of jumps left is set to 15. So let's look at Explore Space 1. So Explorer Space 1 and its pair, Explore Space 2, are where most of the action happens and it calls, that is displays, other passages to do other functionality. So the main thing we saw was the link macro with Hyperjump as its description. Each time we clicked on it, it did three different things. It decreased the fuel by one, it decreased the number of jumps by one, and then it either go to Explore Space 2 if we're looking at 1, or if we're looking at 1 it gets back to 2. So we jump between Explore Space 1 and Explore Space 2, going sort of back and forth each time. We also have a hook here with a name tag HUD with the initial contents of a passage with the name HUD. So we're displaying that content here. And that was what we saw in practice where it had its health, our fuel, and the number of jumps left. Two other things are happening here. We're generating a system using display macro for this passage, and then we're displaying that system. But let's look at each of these in turn. So we'll go back up here to the first one, which is Explore Space 2. 
So as I mentioned, Explore Space 2 is sort of a mirror of Explore Space 1, and we bounce back and forth every time we click on the link. So this is a copy, except with one change here, of Explore Space 1. So Explore Space 1, we click on it, we go back and forth and back and forth, and it allows us to replicate link functionality bouncing between the passages as we do things. Now moving down here to the HUD, let's go look at the HUD passage. So the HUD passage, as I said, shows us our health, and then the value of the variable health, our fuel, the value of the variable fuel, our number of jumps left, and the value of the variable number of jumps left. We're also running display check status using the display macro. So let's go look at check status for just a moment. So check status is where our outcomes happen. So if our health ever dips below zero or is zero, we go to destroyed. If our fuel is less than or equal to zero, we go to lost in space. If our number of jumps left are less than or equal to zero, we go to safe. Let's look at those just for a moment because they're very straightforward. We see destroyed, which is what happened when we played. So we destroyed, game over. Lost in space, we see that outcome. Without fuel, the ship tumbled and spun in the endless black. We see game over. And for safe, we see after 15 hyper jumps, the ship, le the ship left the hazardous area and called for help. And that was success. So those are our three different outcomes. Either we're destroyed, our health drops below is zero or drops below zero. We're lost in space, our fuel is zero or is less than zero. Or we made it all the way to 15 jumps and out of the area. So those are our three outcomes, which are based on check status. Check status is displayed within HUD. HUD is displayed within either Explore Space 1 or Explore Space 2. Now coming back to Explore Space 1 in the example, we looked at HUD. The next one in order is Generate System. Generate System is where we start to get the randomness as part of this game here. So the first thing we do is collapsing all this white space in Harlow using braces here, open and close. So next thing we're doing is reset a temporary variable planets, notice the underscore, temporary, using the set macro to range produces an array of some number to some other number. So in this case, zero to a random number using the random macro, one to three, for a total maximum of four. So counting zero as the first one up to a possibility of three, in which case it'd be a max of four. So the next thing we're doing is we're resetting the system. Because generate system could potentially be called a number of different times, each time we call it, we want to reset the variable system to a new empty array. The reason we're doing that is right here. We're going to run the for macro using the each keyword of a temporary, under, temporary variable i for the full length of planets. Now remember, planets using the range macro is set to an array with indices, that is, what's within it, from zero to whatever. So one, two, three, whatever, or zero, one, two, three, of a maximum of up to three for a total of four. So we want to iterate through each of these in turn, and we want to add the array system to it, so itself, plus a new array using the either macro of red or green. So we're building a new array system each time we use this with the outcome of the string either red or green. Remember, that's a 50% chance, so either red or green. So we're building a new array using generate system each time of a random number of at least one, so at least zero, of a range zero to some other thing. Now, coming back to explore space, we see the next thing in order after we generate it is to display it. So looking at display system, we see another collapse white space from the top here to the bottom, and another use of the for macro, in this case, each the temporary variable planet. So for each planet in the array system. Now we're going through them in order and testing them. So if the planet is red, so if, it's out, if it was set previously to red, we create with the link macro a link, and then when it's clicked on, which will be red in this case, we show outcome red, which we'll go look at these in just a moment. If the planet is green, then we create the word green, and when clicked on, display the content of the passage, show outcome green, and down here we do a break rule just so there's a sp uh, space between them.
Now the reason we're using this is because otherwise these will be collapsed into each other because we're collapsing all of this white space. So we're just throwing some extra HTML just to have each of them be on a new line. So okay, we've generated this system, creating an array of either array array of strings of either the word red or the word green. We're displaying them based on that data, creating link macros displaying show outcome green or show outcome red when clicked on. So let's look at the two of those. So show outcome green is first. So again, collapsing all of this white space from top to bottom, and then using a number of different temporary variables. So the first we're setting a percentage. Now because this is a random, a random outcome, we want to work on sort of a percentage rule, so a 100%. So in this case, we're using random 1 to 10. So if it's 10%, if it's 1, the outcome is, is 10, we say, OK, found fuel is equal to random 1 to 2, so in that range. And then we print out fuel was found in some wreckage, and then whatever was found. Then we update fuel to whatever that number just was. Else, if percentage is greater than or equal to 6, so if our random result was 6, then we say, OK, we found health from 1 to 3, and then we print that outcome, and then we update health else, so if it wasn't this and it wasn't this, then nothing happened. Finally, because we've now updated those numbers, we want to replace the hook with the name tag HUD with the content of HUD. Now let's go and pause for a second to go look at that. Remember, in HUD, it, it shows us our health, our fuel, and the number of jumps left. So if it changes due to any of those outcomes, if health or fuel was changed in any way, well, we, we want to update those in the in the HUD here. The other thing we want to do is check the status just in case we were our health dip below zero or our fuel dip below zero as a result of clicking on those outcomes. So that was show outcome green. Set a percentage, check it, either adjust the fuel or adjust the health and then finally adjust the HUD. And show outcome red, it does the same thing. But remember this was high risk, high reward. So our health may be higher and our fuel may be higher. However, this decreases fuel, or decreases health, and increases fuel, so we lose health, we find a random number of fuel, we see this is six, this is three, so we may lose health either way, and then nothing happens. And then again, like show outcome red, we update the HUD with the result of the passage to the name HUD. So each time here with either show outcome red or show outcome green, we're getting some random numbers, we're looking at those random numbers to figure out a percentage of what happened, then we're decreasing or increasing health or fuel by an additional random number that we've already pre-established, following the rules that we established at the beginning of the game. So a random system, either red or green, red, high risk, high reward, green, low risk, low reward. And as we saw with check status, each time we update the HUD, we check status again to see what the health is, see what the fuel is, see what the number of jumps are. And so as you can see here, we have a space exploration game. Now it's, it's not exactly a whole lot of fun at the moment, but it establishes a way of showing how to do this. So we have explore space one, and we can go to Explorer Space 2 and use it as a turn-based system so we can go back and forth and back and forth each time adjusting the fuel, adjusting the number of jumps left, and generating a new system, displaying that system, and then, depending on the outcome, either show outcome green, show outcome red. And e during each of those, checking our health, our fuel, and our number of jumps would check status. And then, depending on the outcome from there, we were either destroyed, the ship was destroyed and our health dropped below, we were lost in space because our fuel dropped below, or we made it all the way from 15 hyper jumps and we made it to safety. This is an example of using the Harlow macros and functionality to create this same game. Now if you're interested, in the description of this YouTube video will also be links to this same game with the exact same mechanics implemented in Sugarcube and in Snowman, showing the exact same way of doing this throughout each story format.